This video is about my new favorite medium range plane and my new favorite FPV camera. Uh, I'm going to narrate this one, which I'm not accustomed to doing, so please bear with me. That was a nice sliding mode takeoff, auto mode takeoff, using the plastic skid on the belly of the plane. This is being filmed with my new favorite FPV camera, a Tarzir V1, using electronic image stabilization. It's filmed at 1440, 550, and then post-process stretched to 16 by 9 SuperView using the GoPro app. Uh, fortunately, they've discontinued this camera. They've replaced it with the V2, which has basically the same hardware, so they could provide EIS, electronic image stabilization, but they don't. I don't understand why. It does an excellent job uh, for FPV planes. And as you can see, it's a much nicer video without it jiggling around. You see the nose bobbing up and down on this windy day uh, in the view. And so you get a better benefit of the uh, higher resolution. I have it set up on a pan mount. Uh, using a standard servo, but RG Pilot allows you to stretch the pulse width, so you don't need a servo stretcher, and I get about 135 degrees of pan with it. Here I've posted a picture-in-picture -picture view of the FPV camera, which is simply superb. It's the same uh, imager as in the Cadex Retal, and it's just a very nice image getting a little interference on my video feedback which is at 1.3 gig unfortunately the flying field is right next to some very high power uh, sprinkler automation transmitters which occasionally uh, interfere using the dragon link uh, but again just the right conditions uh, in this park, I can get brief, a brief failsafe. Um, but I've been out six or seven miles from this park with it, so uh, not a big problem. Never think about the RF link when you're using Dragon Link. It's a pretty windy day see by the uh, wind indicator over 10 miles an hour out of the northeast so going into uh, a loiter here as it turns downwind it's going to make the turn very fast because the ground speed will start to pick up very quickly and then the turn rate slows down in the loiter as you go crosswind. Now I switch to cruise here. Tried out some guided mode from my phone. I'm using a Dragon Link relay setup to my Horus style transmitter. Actually it's a RadioMaster T16S and I'm using the MAV to pass through converter on the relay box so I can get ground station, full ground station on my smartphone via Wi-Fi as well as getting FR Sky pass through telemetry down to the OpenTX Yapu telemetry script running on the T16. There you'll notice I'm running airspeed autocal on all the time used to be that it was not recommended to do that, but we've changed the Ricket wiki recently. Uh, it's got a very good algorithm for determining when to modify the uh, calibration uh, a little bit on the airspeed sensor. And it'll do that throughout the flight if conditions change, mainly temperature or air pressure. I really love the way the binary flies, handles, 
its range uh, in conjunction with the Tarsier V1. Cadex, if you're listening, please introduce CIS back into the V2. Um, such a great combination. It's my favorite plane. Sliding takeoffs, and it lands very, very nice and slow. I've not had any tip stall problems that others have reported occasionally with this um, plane. Of course, I fly a couple of millimeters forward of the CG mark. I have used the flaps. They're not really necessary, but uh, on a uh, calm day, they really do shorten up the uh, landing approach and roll out. Great plane overall.